Good morning. We would like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us live via Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate that you have taken the time to worship with us this morning. And we ask that you take this time to share this link with a friend, encourage them to join us in with you to watch our Sunday morning worship service. Our Facebook, on Facebook, go ahead and start a watch party. Make sure you to click the like button and show us some love. Also, let us know in the comment section where you're joining us from so that we can personally welcome you. Call to worship, the call to worship. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again, I would like to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service here at the Living Truth Center for Better Living. The Living Truth Center is located in East Cleveland, Ohio, where our senior minister is the Reverend Dorothy J. Wilson. The Living True Sin is a member of the Universal Foundation for Better Living, Incorporated, which is founded by the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman of Chicago, Illinois. The Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen of Kingston, Jamaica, is our president. UFBL is an association of independent New Thought churches and study groups throughout the world that are solely dedicated to spreading the teachings of our way shore, Jesus the Christ. Our vision here at the Living Truth Center for Better Living is that we are an intentionally inter intergenerational community where all people can come and drink from the living waters of truth, thereby inspiring feelings of encouragement, hope, and love. Our mission is to teach truth principles that awaken Christ within, which empowers people to live a healthy, happy, and prosperous life. Each month here at the Living Truth Center, we focus on a spiritual idea and we associate the idea with both a color and a disciple. The spiritual idea for the month of February is love, the disciple is John, and the color of the month is pink. Wearing a current something pink, it reminds us that we celebrate the gift of love. Love is one of the 12 powers inherent in us as a, as a gift from God. Love is the idea in God's mind of universal oneness. It has built binding power, attracting power, harmonizing power, and unifying power. Love is a magnet that has power to draw our good to us. It is a... It is a it is the compassion that makes us feel our oneness with others. <clears throat> Here at the Living Truth Center, we will begin each of our services with an opening statement, and it is as follows. I am a spiritual being. I am one with God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one with the one. And so it is. Amen. For those of you who have our daily inspiration, please take it out. Turn to page 67. Everlasting love. Everlasting love. And you can follow along with me. When we examine our relationships with others, we discover that what we thought was love did not always last and in some cases was not true love at all. They were based almost solely on emotional 
attraction, attachment. As we examine the idea of love in divine mind as universal oneness, we realize that because it is universal and of God, it is everlasting. It begins with God and is God, therefore, there can never be a shortage nor can it end. This is a love that we, mu we must recognize, claim, and express as our own. We must love from a level of spirituality and not from a level of the level that seeks to bind others to us emotionally. When we express love from spiritual consciousness, we will draw to us all that we need or desire by right of consciousness. Expressing love spirituality means we give devoted service, show kindness, and extend tender compassion to others. <clears throat> it means we are willing to co cooperate without fear or concern because like God, we are love. Jeremiah 31, three reads, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my full faithfulness to you. And so it is. And now a, a few reminders for you this week. Remember to join us every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday morning at 9 a.m. for the reading of Daily Inspiration via Facebook and YouTube Live. We ask that you take this opportunity to like, to like, comment, and share our streaming video with your friends and family. UFBL classes. Let me choose Center for Better Living will be offering the basic truth one and two Classes start on Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Classes will be offered remotely via Zoom and will be held from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. A $15 charge is required, which will cover the cost of the class session. For more information and to sign up, please contact the church at 216-249-0242. Two one six two four nine zero three three zero. The class is taught by UFB a certified teacher. Basic Truth One and Two are classes designed to give an overview of the new thought concepts of Christianity. And that is our reminders for this week. We will now have our youth prayer, a musical selection, and our lesson sermon from our senior minister. Reverend Dorothy J. Wilson. Good morning. Greetings to all of you who are joining with us today. And uh, as we begin with our children's prayer, we have a special place in our service to just pray for and pray with our children, the youth, the children. And so, uh, let us begin. And I want to begin by saying, and Jesus said, let the children come unto me. Do not hinder them, for to them belong the kingdom of God. All right, we will begin our prayer with just Moving in to a thought of connecting in mind with God. The thought today is, is that I'm going to use my spiritual name, I am, along with the name that I'm called. And I'm going to see. It's really a part of my life that I'm a child of God. So let me 
begin first, and then you will follow. I am. Now that's my name. I am. Dorothy Henry Wilson. Child of God. I know that God created me in his image and in his likeness to express God. They call me Dorothy Henry Wilson, but I'm a child of God. And so I'm just totally connected there. And then I would like for you to just get prepared to see your name that they call you, but make sure it's connected with your spiritual name of I am. And uh, so we'll say this is our time for prayer and blessings. And for each and every one of you, I want you to, even where you are out there, being streamed live, our services, but I want you to know that in spirit, we are right here together. And I'm going to ask those of you who are joining with us this morning in service and in prayer, will you just extend your hand? Extending your hand is that connected for you saying there are two or more where the two will gather together and they are in the midst. And we are praying with our children and our youth and for our children this morning. So let us pray. This is our time for prayer and blessing. An idea today is, I want you to know the answer is in your question and your thought for your prayer is, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Christ Jesus loves me. Can we sit? Let us just breathe. I want you to breathe with me. Inhale and exhale about three times. Let's do this together. Come on. Breathing, I am in the presence of God. And know right here and right now in the presence of God, connecting with you and the spirit within us. I'm praying with you and for you. I'm praying with you and for you to tell you, yes, Jesus loves you. So will you just, like the little child that you used to sing the song, Yes, Jesus loves you. I want you to just say it silently within you. Say, yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. And as I'm praying with you and for you, I'm praying with you and for you to let you know that Jesus always loves you. Jesus the Christ loves you. Loves you when you are doing good, and when you think you're not doing so good, Jesus Christ does not stop looking. Jesus Christ is there to extend his love to you and for you when you're doing good, to help you keep on doing Jesus Christ's love is there for you when you are not doing so good to help you to get to doing good. So when you're right, when you think you're right, Jesus loves you. When you think you're wrong, Jesus loves you. And I'm praying God's blessings on you for making the merit roll for setting it as a goal next time. 
I'm praying for you for that honest role, a high honest role, that you set your goal to reach. I'm praying for you and with you for it. Go. And when you make it, I want to rejoice with you. Yes, yes, yes. And if you need to another chance, know that God loves you so much that he keeps on giving you another chance. Know this, God loves you. Jesus loves you. Just breathe. And I'll breathe in. Jesus loves you. And know that you always get second chances. God never gives up on you. God loves you. So don't give up on yourself. God is right there with you for whatever goal or desire it is that you have in your mind. And know that as we end our prayer, we will focus on the truth that is given to us in Psalm 91, 15. I will be with you, I will ensure, I will deliver you, I will honor you says the Lord. I will be with you, says the Lord, and know this when you are in trouble, and I will deliver you, and I will honor you. And so it is, amen and amen. I love you, and God bless you. My name is Jaslyn Adams. The month of February is Black History Month, and I want to share a few facts about the history of Shirley Chrisman and how her presidential com campaign put her on the national stage. Born in 1924 on November 30th, Shirley Chrisman moved in lived in New York and was raised by her grandmother in, on an island called Bar Barbados. Once she got older, she moved back to New York, getting her master's degree in elementary education for Columbia University, Brooklyn College. She became a teacher, got married to her first husband, and then got elected to serve in the New York State government. Shirley Chrysalum was one of the best out of many powerful African American women who later became a Congresswoman that led her to become the very first in the United States in 1963, I mean 1969. She was not shy at all, and everyone knew she loved to speak her mind. She fought for education, social, dis social justice, supporting daycares and school lunch programs throughout her career. One of her powerful statements she used was, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Shirley Chrysalum ran for president in 1972. She became the first major party black candidate to make a bid for the U.S. Presidency. She will always say, I am not the candidate of Black America, although I am Black and proud. 
I am not the candidate of the black women's movement of the country, although I am a woman and I am not e and I am equally proud of it. I am the candidate of the people and my pres presidency before you now symbolize a new era in America po politician history. Shirley Chrisalem also survived three assassination attempts while com while campaigning while competing in the Democratic nomination to the United States to the United States presidency in 1972. Also, she wrote two books in her lifetime, Unbought and Unbossed. Are the names of the books written by her in 1973. Shirley Chrisalem left Congress in 1983, but continued to give lectures at Mont Hockley, Hockley College. At the age of 80, she died in California on Saturday, January 1st, 2005. Let us just become still. Still in mind to the presence of God. Still to the conscious awareness of the presence of God. Thing that was happening. The people who came there were simply catalysts to help to bring out that which, that love that was in the baby. You see, if we reflect on the story spiritually, we come to the conclusion that children become healthier, more importantly, because they are given the opportunity to love. There is a crucial difference. You see, the baby, just like an egg, in a, just like an egg, that produces a chicken. It is because it doesn't need anything else on the inside. It is, it's that egg needs to have whatever is necessary for it to express until it breaks out of the shell. It is important that we get an opportunity or find the opportunity to express love. It has been given to us. And Jesus is saying, the way that you can express out and get the benefit of it is find somebody to love. Find some situation to call forth the presence of God in it. When we find a way to break out, then we experience the love. As long as we hoard it, no chance we are just like Scrooge until he finds a way to find something in him so that he can start expressing. Then nobody can stop him all over the world. He just wants to give, give, give. Because it's such a blessing to give love. You see, it has a powerful effect on you to be able to express love. Little children love to have a teddy bear. They love to have something they can hug and squeeze in so that they can express the love out. This is the God in us, the blanket. I remember my daughter used to have that blanket she was carrying around with and I, I took it one day while she was uh, still not asleep and, and washed it, she just was, I'm telling you, that was a bad day for that child until that blanket 
that she walked around and hugged and sucked on a one. It was her way. It is that we must have a way to express love. You see, we cannot fully be alive until we express love. <laughs> this is what the Jephobians say. We cannot be fully alive until we express the love we have. As creations of God, we are whole and complete. Therefore, nothing has to be added to us. Only released. God has given us love. We must release. I, uh, there's a story in John and Luke 15, 1 through 7, where Jesus, this is part two, where Jesus is showing, uh, illustrating this love. You see, Jesus didn't just uh, tell the people to love, he showed them how to do it. And here's a lesson you will find in Luke 15, 1, 7, where Jesus called together, he had a, a congregation gathering of, uh, it's called the lost sheep. And uh, he was in this particular gathering and there, you see, when Jesus got ready to, they, they, he called taxpayers, and taxpayers were like considered in society like the worst kind of people there were. I'm not going to make a comparison of who it could be. I'm not going to do that on, on, uh, on Zoom with me. I, I may have to. I'll, I'll just leave it on. The taxpayers, they were people who were complicit in a, a government that was unjustly taxing people and they would hide themselves out in order to uh, fleece the most, uh, let's see, uh, the, uh, the most unwealthy of all, hardly having anything to eat, Close shelter. They would, you know, extract taxes from them for the Roman government. So people hated tax collectors. And then you had the publicans. They were like a corporation. There was levels of height. You know, you had the publican and the tax collectors. And so when Jesus had his teaching experience that day, he had with him, he called forth, he called everybody. Every soul belongs to God. No matter what it is that you are doing or what you have done, you have the love of God in you. So Jesus called these tax collectors and the publican, the sinners, the scribes and the Pharisees. Now the scribes and the Pharisees are the people who knew the letter of the law, but they didn't have spirit. So when they are there in this, you will find in the story of John 15, Luke 15, 1, 7. The tax players and the publicans are listening to Jesus. But the publicans, this group of people who separated themselves from these sinners and others, what they said was like, Jesus, not only does he associate with them, he eats with them. So, I almost want to get the Bible and just started reading that story right now, but please read it. It's in Luke 15, 1 7. But you see, when they criticized Jesus, they start whispering among themselves. You know how folks. You know, they had a certain situation and they got something against me. They was like, can you believe it? He's got, you know, like you could invite us because we holy and stuff, you know. But you got these tax players and sinners. They started to say among themselves, 
How can he call himself who he say he is when he got all these people? Well, sinners. But you see, Jesus is teaching the lesson. This man receives sinners and eats with them. Jesus had this moment to convey a message of love. Jesus gave the parable of the lost sheep. See, when they start to criticize him, Jesus didn't start trying to uh, defend himself and say, no, this is what I'm doing. He gave them something on their minds. And see, that's what a parable does. It makes you think you come to the conclusion. So Jesus gave the parable of the lost sheep. It says, who among you would have a hundred sheep? And if one of them was lost, you would leave the 99 in the world because that's where they you're leaving and go get the one. This is what Jesus put on their mind. So you know they disappeared. Jesus put this on their mind. So then, but what is the idea of the story in this parable? It tells us that every person is precious in the sight of God. Tax plan, sinner, even the ones who think they're all high and mighty and got it right. God loves all of us. The presence of God is in each and every person. And if this person finds a way to express out the love, God will save him. You see, all souls are precious. So the key point is like the one. Jesus saying 99, letting those Pharisees know, letting them know it's every one of them, not just you, everyone, all people are God's children. And God is of no respect to person. You see, think about it. Divested of titles, social position, status, and all of this, Every one of us is the same in the sight of God. It's not the Christ love that makes you think that you're better than someone else because of a title that you have or position. It's not the Christ love to even look down upon the most egregious sinner. The Christ love says to know that Christ is in, he, he deserves the presence too. You see, the presence of God is in each soul. The Christ is the God potential, the potential in each one of us. The Christ is God's idea of itself in man. Which is love. Jesus not only taught the truth about love, he expressed it. So we're talking about the lesson there. He expressed it. Let's look quickly at just a few examples of how he showed it. He demonstrated love through his healing. When the man of leprosy came to Jesus saying, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus didn't look at his condition of the outer, the effect, that he's ostracized and quarantined. He said, I will, and he reached his hand and he healed them. This is because Jesus didn't look on that. He looked at the fact that the Christ was in this love. The centurion servant, way away, Jesus saw the Christ and he the blind man, he saw the Christ in him. The Christ made him perfect, whole and complete with no impediment. Jesus saw that perfection. And when the Christ pours from God in us and we see it in others, we too will become his. 
Oh my God. The man with the withered hand. Jesus didn't see a withered hand because God did create it. God created man perfect in the image and likeness and said to man, have dominion. Jesus exercised the dominion to call forth the truth of being in that man. And when the people were hungry, he fed the five thousand. So I say to each and every one of us, we can get happy about all the things that Jesus did and believe them. But God is calling for each and every one of us. This lesson today is asking us on the level of where we are to find a way to vent, to express, to bring out love within ourselves for our brothers and sisters. Not the people necessarily who's in your church, the brothers and sisters in the world. How do we love? You know, we can start like how they say you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Jesus has told us for good. He's like, love your enemies. Who is it in your life that's most controversial and adversarial to you? Find a way to give some love. Forgive. Who has done? You see, we have the love within us to bring forth that healing the same as Jesus did. You see, most important, and I'm going to close on this. I'm going to close on this because it just, it, it, it flowed me. It got me over and over again. The most important we can start. Practice the golden rule. Don't practice the golden rule. Nobody needs to know what's going on between you and your God and your soul and your bringing it forth. But we can practice the golden rule. We can practice, find a way to do to others what we would have them do. That is to us, that is what compassion is. That is what love is. I rest my case. So let us go forth today. The Christ love. Let's lift him up. Lift him up by finding a way to vent our love, to express love. And know this. In John 17, 31, 32. If you continue in my word, Jesus has told us. This new commandment I've given to you that you love one another. So I do. If you continue in my word, said Jesus, then you are my disciple. We are calling ourselves followers of the Christ. We must. Continue in the word. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And so it is. Amen and amen. I want to thank you today. And I want to for joining with us in our worship service this morning. And I really want to thank the team of uh, the technical teams who make it possible for us to share the message for the world. You're so wonderful and I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful for you. But right now, I want to thank those of you who continue to bless us. Those of you who are expressing and venting your love for God through your giving. 
Because you know that as you vent, as you give forth from what you have, give to a good cause, then God blesses us. It's the law. It blesses us in a way that it's pressed down, shaken together, and one and over when we give. So I thank you for your giving of your tithes, your love offerings, and how you choose to give, how you choose to give of your talents, how you choose to give of your time. Any way in which you are expressing this wonderful love of giving, I want you to know that I thank you so much. And I want you to join in with you with saying the prayers. You see, I know, I believe in I believe in prayer. You can pray over anything, and I'm telling you, prayer works. So let's pray over what you are prepared to give to them. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And as I turn within to this presence, to this God love that is within me, I say, I affirm, I voice, I utter these words. I give lovingly, I give cheerfully, and I give generously. And the return comes to me 100 more. And for this, I say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just a couple of reminders I want to thank you again for being here. And I want to let you know that we have Basic Truth, Basic Truth 1 that is being taught on Tuesday night. You can check into our website and sign up for this course. And I guarantee you, it will, be, it will certainly be food for thought. Moreover, I just know that you can be blessed by, even if you have already taken basic truth one, just decide to take it again to be a support of wonderful teachers who are working with us. So I look forward to seeing you there. And uh, be on the lookout for our um, Lenten season. We will do Ash Wednesday on the 17th. And just know, I want to say thank you again. And God bless you. I love you. And I want to say the benediction. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Nor has it entered into the heart the good that God has. The good. Find a way to vent the love. Throughout this week, there's some way to vent love. What about just starting with a golden rule? Yes. Now together, if you will join with me in saying, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches us. Wherever we are, God is, and so it is, amen and amen. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful, wonderful day, a wonderful, wonderful week. Well, we look forward to meeting with you again. Thank you.